Hi folks, we're nearly at the end of the videos that I'm making today and today today I want to talk about uh, the debate between Mohammed Hijab and David Wood and to give my uh, thoughts concerning that, that debate that happened last night uh, David Wood uh, it's a Christian apologist, and Mohammed Hijab, those who don't know, is a Muslim apologist, and they debated on the Trinity and Taweed. And I want to just give you my running thoughts on the debate, and really, so that we can learn, so that we can learn from this debate. You know, that's why I'm doing this. And I, I have all my notes here, so I made these notes on the debate. And basically in the debate, um, Mohammed Hijab opened and he he asked four questions. He asked about the where, how come the rabbis over thousands of years didn't believe in a trinity from the Old Testament. Um, and Primarily, how come the early church fathers uh, took 400 years to come to the Trinity? Uh, and he asked a couple of other questions as well. Uh, this was his kind of opening gambit. And then he kind of went into the Hebrew words, singular words for God in the Old Testament. And then went into um, a couple of New Testament scriptures uh, concerning like uh, Mark 10 where it talks about Jesus says uh, that there's only one God etc uh, responds to the to to the guy who says there's only one God and Jesus says you know you, you, you're saying the right thing so that was kind of uh, and then Muhammad Hijab gave a philosophical argument which was basically I think what he was saying was in ontology you cannot have an eye unless it's referring to another eye and so how can you have a if you're going to have a trinity that would mean there would be three eyes which would mean that there were three gods so he was using uh, a kind of ontological argument philosophical argument which was a bit complex he rushed it quite quickly um, in the debate um, for David Wood, he kind of focused on the Quran and mentioned lots of information concerning the Quran and the, the contradictions in the Quran and concerning its own understanding of the oneness of God. So he noticed that, like Allah's praying to Allah, and uh, that Muhammad is kind of almost worshipped as a deity that the word spirit and the word almost show that there are three gods and things like that. So that was kind of uh, David Wood's tact. So that was just a rough, very, very rough, not fully complete surmising of some of the issues that were in the debate. Uh, so what, what, what is my conclusion of the debate? Who won the debate? Uh, and what were some of the issues of the debate and what were some of the lessons of the debate who won the debate listening to the debate to me Muhammad Hijab came across better that, 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 that is without any spin without any uh, just objectively I believe that Muhammad Hijab came off better uh, the reason being is is a lot of the arguments that David Wood gave were against the Quran and because Muhammad Hijab knew, knew Arabic uh, he was able to answer these arguments that David Wood give now whether they were successful responses to, Muhammad, uh, to David Wood whether they were successful or not because he knew Arabic, it came across to the public that he knew what he was talking about. 
So it, it kind of strengthened uh, Muhammad Hijab's case because he knew Arabic and it came across as if he knew what he was talking about. And secondly, um, he dealt with the arguments of David Wood more than David Wood dealt with the arguments of Muhammad Hijab. So on that basis, it came across as if uh, Muhammad Hijab got the better of David Wood. Uh, that that is my fair assessment. Uh, now, Muhammad, uh, David Wood gave uh, scriptural arguments for the Trinity, and Muhammad Hijab never dealt with those scriptural arguments that David Wood gave. Um, so you know you have to be fair there. Uh, but my overall impression is Muhammad Hijab, I think, came across the best. <coughs> one because he was forceful and David was very subdued and it looked as if David was not at his best David was not at his best David was just subdued and I think and that weakened his case because Muhammad Hijab was quite vibrant so he was able to emphasize his points more and that came across better and David Wood should have uh, upped his game and been his usual vibrant forceful self and he wasn't and I think that weakened his case so uh, the philosophical issues of Muhammad Hijab were never tackled um, the historical data that Muhammad Hijab brought up uh, was not tackled properly there should have been more of an understanding of the early church fathers by David Wood and so he could expound more what Tertullian said, what Origen said, what Justin Martyr said uh, there was not a lot of depth I don't think coming from uh, David Wood and also I didn't like the issue of kenosis theory being used because that's not a good theory that is a theory that was invented in the 19th century the kinetic kenosis theory is that uh, that God became a man and that the man uh, pushed aside his knowledge the Godhood of of, 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 of the man pushed, pushed aside his knowledge that 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 is not correct uh, how can God push aside his knowledge God knows everything so the kenosis theory is very weak and very dangerous. Uh, the idea that the glory of God was pushed aside. So when in Philippians two he thought it not robbery to be equal with to, to be to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation. That is the glory of God being pushed aside. That's okay. You can say that, but to say is knowledge, then you're on dodgy ground. And in the question and answer. David Wood um, said the kenosis theory, which I don't think is right, and James White and Matt Slick used the kenosis theory, and, and they're wrong to use it. It's, it's bad theology, and these people should know better, they should be more enlightened, and they, they've read theology, they should have an idea that that is a 19th century idea, and it's not wise to be using it. Uh, so I was disappointed last night. I was di disappointed in David Wood. I think uh, Muhammad Hijab seemed confident. He seemed a bit bombastic. But we have the gospel. Paul says, cursed is anyone who preaches not the gospel. We have the gospel. We have Christ who died and rose again. So we should be strong and confident and bold in our presentation in our debates. But David Wood didn't have that boldness that he normally has and didn't focus on the gospel in the issue of the Trinity which he should have done which would have given him that extra boldness in the debate so I was disappointed in David Wood um, I think he should have he allowed too much credence from Muhammad Hijab 
Muhammad Hijab should have been challenged on his interpretation of church history. He should have been more challenged on his interpretation and exegesis of the Old Testament and the New Testament. It should have been made clear to him that he is a looking at it from a Islamic perspective. Excuse me. Um, yeah. So, so those are my thoughts really. Um, there were there, 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 there should have been more philosophical arguments on Taweed there should have been much more um, strategic issues concerning the Quran and, it, and the issue of the Trinity so in other words the, the exegesis that that and the arguments that Muhammad, uh, that David Wood was using, he should have been uh, picked much more stronger arguments. Um, so, for example, the the argument that the Trinity gets it wrong, he did pick on that, but he didn't unfold it. He didn't unpack it. And if he'd unfolded it and unpacked it, it would have had a more powerful resonance in the debate. One of the strong points of David Wood, and the weak point of Muhammad Hijab, was the issue of polytheism and the worshipping of the stone and the walking around the Kaaba and the, and the polyth polytheism that Islam had imbibed historically. Uh, Muhammad Hijab did not deal with that in any in-depth way. And... Um, David Wood should have pushed that even more and give it more credence. Um, so, I, to be honest, I, I was dis disappointed in the debate. I thought Muhammad Hijab came across stronger. Even though he came across stronger, it doesn't necessarily mean he won the argument. I'm not saying he won the argument. I'm saying he came across stronger because of certain methodologies and ways that he debated so for example when you go into a debate you've got to go into the debate with fearlessness and a desire to win and absolute confidence and I felt that David Wood went into the debate rather subdued so that was a weakness before you even begin Mohammed Hijab went into that debate fearless, confident and desiring to win and it came across and those who have the strongest will will win you've got to go into a debate with a strong will with a desire to win with a desire with, with confidence and boldness and fearlessness and David Wood seemed to lack that in the debate and uh, it meant that issues that needed to be emphasized he wasn't emphasizing and it meant that Muhammad Hijab was coming across more clearly in the emphasis that he was making secondly in a debate you have to answer your opponent's questions now in the first round David Wood did not pick up on the four questions that Muhammad Hijab did but in the first round Muhammad Hijab took points and dealt one by one the points, the 11 points as it were, or 10 points that David Wood mentioned about the Quran and Taweed. And it didn't look good from David's perspective. It was only the third, uh, the second or the third round, I think it was the third round, uh, where David Wood then picked up on the four main questions of David Wood, uh, sorry, David Wood picked up the four questions of Muhammad Hijab. And so that didn't look good. When you're in a debate, when your opponent asks you questions and makes points, when, you net, when, when it comes to your turn to rebut, then <coughs> rebut some of those questions. So it looks as if you're engaging and you're dealing with what they have to say and then get back onto the treadmill of what you want to say. David Wood left that too late, so it didn't look good for him in the debate. The best bit of David Wood's debate, debate was right at the end. 
his closing statement was quite powerful uh, because he was able to bring some of the elements together and the other nugget that David had is when he went into the Hebrew of the Shema uh, uh, our Lord God is one uh, and, he, and he expounded that and he used uh, Jewish scholars that was part of the best part of the debate because he really uh, nailed it with good uh, scholarship on that. Um, the other issue, third issue, is know your sources. Uh, I doubt that Muhammad Hijab actually had read the early church fathers. And it would have been an advantage to David Wood if he could have quoted the early church fathers with a knowledge of these early church fathers that he'd read Origen, he'd read Tertullian, he'd read Irenaeus and a lack of knowledge on these issues uh, weakened him when it came to the historical discussions. Uh, the best bit there was on the Ebionites um, David Wood was able to get the better of Muhammad Hijab of the Ibionites on that issue uh, calling into question that they are not the early Christians because they would even contradict Islam because they didn't believe in the virgin birth etc and that they were not particularly first century because the knowledge the information that we have comes from 140 AD um, the issue concerning, um, just trying to think of some other issues that came up in the debate. Uh, Muhammad Hijab kept kept saying, kept kept said that uh, Paul believed in in Jesus was God, but he was a subordinationist, and he dismissed the Gospel of John because it was late. Um, David Wood should have should have. Uh, called Muhammad Hijab out on that and said look uh, you're saying Paul believed in the divinity but he was a subordinationist and, and said yeah but he, he believed that when you're saying subordinationist that does not mean that Paul did not believe that Christ was God and equal to God the Father so this subordinationist argument by Muhammad Hijab was a red herring and it should have been called out on Pauline theology and then on the issue of the Gospel of John, it should have been pointing out to uh, to uh, Muhammad Hijab that there are reasons why a lot of scholars don't take the Gospel of John seriously on the day to Christ. And it's because they're influenced by the history of Western philosophy and how that has impacted our hermeneutical studies of the Gospel of John. For example, Hegelian philosophy. Uh, has been heavily and other philosophies have been heavily influencing biblical studies to make people say that we don't use the Gospel of John for uh, our understanding of the divinity of Christ. So an understanding of the history of biblical studies and calling Muhammad Hijab out on that to say, look, you're criticizing the Gospel of John, but a lot of these people, the scholars who you're saying that don't accept John, are critical scholars who are uh, influenced by philosophy and if we use that on the Quran you would not be happy so you're using a hypocritical standard when you're attacking the Bible and the Gospel of John on that issue My, uh, David Wood should have called him out on that um, the issue concerning um, the issue concerning uh, uh, just in Martin mentioning that the deity of Christ is similar to uh, Greek mythology it should have been pointed out uh, and expounded about Greek mythology and that uh, just in Martin though he was using the illusion does not make it true because generally speaking um, the idea that Christianity is a copycat of Greek religion uh, most scholars would not agree with and go into the issues of why that's the case um, that 
for example, the dying and rising gods is not in these ancient religions, Greek religions, as uh, people would say. And so that would weaken the argument to say that the deity has been copied from, uh, the trinity has been copied from these other religions, which, uh, which, which, which can be shown uh, not to be the case. So he should have gone into some of the ancient texts of the Greeks and expounded what they said and, and then showed uh, that that's nothing to do with the Trinity and that Justin Martyr made the illusion but he pushed the illusion too far. It should have been expounded a bit more on that issue. So for example, if you read the Orthic hymns, you know, the Orthic hymns, uh, ancient Greek literature, on some of these gods, there's nothing concerning a trinity uh, in there. So, so yeah, so th those are my issues. Uh, if you're going into a debate, you need to be fearless. You need to go in with a desire to win, and you've got to go in boldly. If you go into a debate, you've got to be prepared to rebut your opponent straight away. When you go into a debate, you've got to know your ancient sources, and there was a lack of that concerning David Wood. When you go into a debate, you have to be strategic in the arguments that you make, and David Wood was not strategic. He honed in on ambivalent arguments concerning the Quran and its understanding of Taweed, which were ambivalent to Muslims and ambivalent to Christians. There were much more stronger arguments that he could have made and honed in on. So for example, he should have honed in on, he mentioned it, but he should have made a bigger issue that the Quran says that there are three, David Wood mentions it, but he doesn't flesh it out. He doesn't give the, the grammar of the Arabic. He doesn't go into the scholarship of the issue. And that is that the, the understanding of the Trinity in the Quran is wrong. And so therefore the Quran cannot be right. He should have gone much more stronger and focused much more on the issue of polytheism concerning uh, going around the Kaaba and kissing the stone that was a much, much stronger argument that David Wood mentioned, but he should have honed in on that and gave a much more elaboration, much more scholarship on it. He should have made some philosophical arguments. He should have undermined some of the exegesis that Muhammad Hijab made. Um, and um, so you need to have a variety of arguments not just one line of argument so here David would have one line of argument one type a collection of arguments on the Quran's understanding of Taweed and that was his argument he, he, he used that kind of argument uh, 11 arguments but of similar kind but he should have had more more variety a philosophical argument a couple of uh, Historical arguments, like saying there's polytheism, poly, polytheism uh, in the history of, 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 of Islam, kissing the Kaaba, uh, going around the Kaaba, kissing the stone, etc. He should have had some more, uh, some theological arguments, uh, so using, uh, showing that how the, 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 the Trinity makes sense theologically in terms of redemption whereas the Quran doesn't and, and Islam doesn't some exegetical argument so your exegetical argument theological argument philosophical argument historical argument and uh, some uh, Quranic argument so a more variety in your arguments and and and, and then in depth give it a lot more depth on those arguments and be ready for rebuttals much more and then strengthen against the rebuttals uh, to be fair David Wood gave some good rebuttals 
and, and from time to time he brought some good scholarship to rebut what Muhammad Hijab said but I still believe that if he'd have used more variety in his arguments philosophical, theological, exegetical, historical and uh, Quranic then he would have been in a much stronger position uh, to, to take on um, to take on uh, Muhammad Hijab and Muhammad Hijab used a variety of arguments so he used historical he used philosophical he used exegetical he used theological he used a variety and so I think it made his case much much stronger um, because once once David Wood went into the 11 arguments that he made but all the same kind of arguments once he went into those 11 arguments but the same kind of arguments if your opponent can answer those ver those same kind of arguments then you're in trouble because that's all you've got and so Muhammad Ijab was able because he knew Arabic to bamboozle the audience with Arabic so whether he was right or wrong the audience were taken in because he had that knowledge of Arabic so it weakened David Wood's position because once he used all his firepower on that issue of on the issue of these 11 arguments then he had nothing left and so you, you hit them with philosophical argument you hit them with exegetical argument you hit them with a the theological argument so for example your philosophical argument you can say that the Trinity makes sense of reality there is one and three uh, there is one reality but there are many the Trinity makes sense of that Tawi doesn't make sense of that Tawi doesn't get rid of differentiation Samuel Green brought this up so that's your philosophical argument then you go on to your theological argument the, the Trinity makes more sense than, than Tawi in terms of salvation the father plans salvation the son uh, accomplishes salvation the spirit reveals salvation that makes more sense than the Quran and its understanding of Tawi where where is redemption in in the Quran and, and Islam then <coughs> you go into your exegetical argument you point out the biblical position which David Wood did but then in your exegetical argument you also pick out some of the arguments that your opponents have made on the exegesis and expose those exegesis as being incorrect your exegetical argument so your philosophical your theological <coughs> your exegetical then your historical you you show that Islam has been polytheistic it's not been like it's been pure monotheism and you show that they borrowed from the pagans and you go into the <coughs> their history <coughs> and then you counter any possible arguments against you by going into church history and expound church history so you make your historical arguments then you go into the Quran and you expose the Quran so you make a couple of Quranic arguments so you point out the contradiction within the Quran for example its misunderstanding of the Trinity now that would have been a much more powerful and stronger position than using 11 arguments on the Quran on a specific way of understanding the specific way of understanding the Quran and because it was highly technical and it was highly uh, kind of <coughs> it was correct it was it was right <coughs> but that would have been better to write in a paper not in a debate because a lot of people uh, a lot of Muslims would have just dismissed it all off the bat straight away without even listening because they believe that the Quran teaches Taweed so they would just not listen to that and your Christian audience would listen to it would have felt well it's a bit far flung this is like it's like stretching out and pulling out a rabbit out of the bag it doesn't really look substantive uh, but in a paper, if you wrote it in a paper, it would look substantive because you could show all the backing up, but not in a debate. 
And so you, you had one type of argument, but it was 11 arguments. And once your opponent who knows Arabic knocks them down, even though he's not correct, you've got nowhere to go. And, and that's, that's what came across to me. Um, so those are my, that's my, my honest opinion. When you're in debate, you must have a desire to win. You must be fearless. When you're in a debate, you must rebut your opponent straight away and then give your... When you're in a debate, have a variety of arguments, but those arguments must be in depth. Don't have one type of argument. Be in depth. I debated... Uh, I debated uh, Adam Rashid. Uh, 